Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Law 11 of 2017, ratifying the agreement signed between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Russian Federation Republic, dated 15th December 2015, regarding the transfer of convicted inmates sentenced to a specific term in jail. The Prime Minister and Ministers, each according to the domain, have been tasked to implement this law, which will also be published in the official Gazette. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Honorary President of the Royal Charity Organisation, received today at Safriya Palace, representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs and RCO Chairman of the Board of Trustees, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, a number of RCO officials and a number of Bahraini orphans on the occasion of the Arab Orphan Day. The attendees expressed thanks and appreciation for His Majesty's paternal care, support to the RCO and his wise directives to develop the work of the Royal Charity Organisation to provide the best services to all orphans in the Kingdom. A number of orphans presented flower bouquets to the King. Then the attendees greeted His Majesty. His Majesty welcomed the guests, hailing the efforts of the RCO under the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Nasser in the service of charitable work and humanitarian aid inside and outside Bahrain. He expressed appreciation for their work as officials and educators. His Majesty praised the achievements of the RCO on a local and regional level, the programmes it provides to guarantee the best services to orphans, to prepare them for a promising future in service of their country, and its noble efforts in providing humanitarian aid to refugees and people in need in a number of countries. His Majesty directed to provide more services to orphans, widows and all citizens in need, and to focus on the quality of services based on the teachings of Islam. Bahraini values and the spirit of solidarity and love. He noted Bahrain's rich history and expressed hope for Bahrainis to contribute to the progress and prosperity and development of the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty the King wished the RCO's affiliates further success in the pursuit of humanitarian work that aims to serve and attend to the needs of orphans, as well as advancing the performance of the organization and its charity programs and projects. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed his thanks and deep appreciation for His Majesty's reception of the orphans and meeting with them on a continuous basis, which confirms his keenness in safeguarding their rights and sponsorship to ensure a decent living. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also noted that His Majesty has directed to look after the orphans in all aspects in a manner that shapes their personalities and improves their skills for the goal of creating a comprehensive community partnership, in line with His Majesty's vision since the inception of the RCO. He also added that His Majesty the King has always been involved with charity work, affirming that such noble actions are a motivation to exert sincere efforts for the care of orphans in the Kingdom of Bahrain.
The RCO Secretary General, Dr Mustafa Al Sayed, delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation on behalf of the organisation's members for his continuous support and care to orphans and widows. He noted His Majesty's humanitarian initiatives reflected in the provision of development projects, particularly in the field of health and education. Al Sayed said that the RCO was honoured to win Her Royal Highness Wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa's award to support productive families and the Best Web Content Award, organised by the American company 3W. He added that the organisation has been operating under the latest administrative systems according to the directives of His Majesty the King. The organisation also launched the new five-year strategy that aims to promote the achievements of His Majesty the King in international humanitarian forums. Al Sayyid asserted that a new strategy will be adopted to create a financial structure that guarantees the continuity of the work of the organisation that His Majesty has created. He highlighted the organization's leading role in providing humanitarian aid to countries including Syria, Palestine, Pakistan, Somalia, Turkey and the Philippines. ورؤيته وهو رجل فارس شاعر أديب كريم ودي أوصل لك أمانة وهي شيء زامن مع الجوائز الكثير اللي حصلناها جوائز عالمية ومحلية بس أغلى جائزة أنا أحس حصلناها اللي من أم لأيتام ترفع يدها للسماء ومو في حضوركم تدعي لكم بطول العمر وللبحرين الخير والأمان هاي نعتبرها أمانة أكبر جائزة ولا أريد أحصل جوائز العالمية اليوم كان لي شرف أول شيء دعمكم ومكرمتكم لبناء برجين ضمن الاستراتيجية الخمسية اللي تصب في الاستراتيجية العشرينية لتكوين محفظة استثمارية مالية تضمن مستقبل واستمرار هالعمل الرائع وإنشاءكم للمؤسسة المباركة في المستقبل لتجنب أي تقلبات اقتصادية ونتكلم عن بعد عشرين سنة من الآن والعمل جاري ب مهنية عالية بتوجيه من سمو الشيخ ناصر من ناحية الإبداع والتحفيز والإنجازات كثيرة من من مركز ناصر إلى رعاية الأيتام بالشمولية إلى الاعتناء بصحتهم ولا أريد يعني أطيل في الإنجازات فهي كثيرة وأنتم على علم باعتباركم رئيس الفخري للمؤسسة لا أستطيع إلا أن أطلب من الله أن يطيل في عمركم ويزيكم خير جزاء على عملكم ومحلكم لرعاية الأيتام الجنة شكرا On the occasion, student Nuf al Dusri recited a poem dedicated to His Majesty the King titled Hamid the Dear Father, written by Adol Juma al Mahmid. <laughs> ولاني قادر استوعب وإذا في الظن حلمانا مليك يحضن عياله يكلمهم ويسمعهم ويشجعهم ينصحهم ولا عادوا أبد أيتام ولكن ليش استغرب وليش أقول حلمانا تراني عند أبو سلمان 
سألتك يا عظيم الشان ولا أسأل أبد غيرك تدوم أفراح ديرتنا ويبقى دوم والدنا ملكنا الغالي بو سلمان قبل لا أروح وأسلم إذا تسنح لي في كلمة جميع الناس وصوني وخلوها أمانة لك أسلمها وهالكلمة طال عمرك أبد ما تنكتب بأقلام ولا حروف اللغة ضمها ولا الأحبار تطبعها ولكن تنطبع في الراس وتكتبها قلوب الناس أبد ما وفتك حقك وحقك دين فوق الراس وحقك دين فوق الراس The Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabiya Palace today the Kuwaiti Ambassador to the Kingdom and Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Sheikh Hazam Mubarak Al Subah, in the presence of a number of royal family members. His Royal Highness praised the strong ties linking the GCC countries and the political and economic cooperation that supports and strengthens these relations. He added that the factors and the unique relationship of GCC countries were able to overcome certain challenges and wars witnessed in some Arab countries. His Royal Highness then discussed topics regarding regional and international development and affirmed Bahrain's keenness to enhance cooperation with the GCC countries and strengthen the Gulf regional cooperation, stressing that the current phase requires all efforts to eliminate the challenges facing the region. He hailed the efforts exerted by the GCC leaders and their role in enhancing cooperation and coordination on the bilateral and Gulf levels in fields of politics and economics in order to benefit the countries and their peoples. In line with His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's directive to provide modern and affordable housing across Bahrain, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, instructed the allocation of 4,200 housing units at various locations across the kingdom today. His Royal Highness's latest directive follows two previous orders which led to the successful allocation of 3,000 and 3,200 units respectively across different parts of Bahrain in 2016. This housing drive illustrates the success of the Kingdom's housing policies and the implementation of the Government Action Plan 2015 to 2018, which continues to see significant progress under the leadership of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. In the new directive, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince underscored the importance of continuing to work with the same efficiency and pace to meet the housing needs of all Bahrainis. His Royal Highness's directive reflects the Kingdom's firm commitment to prioritising development projects that directly contribute to the improvement of citizens' living standards, a key component of His Majesty's comprehensive development programme. 
The Government Action Plan is centred on serving citizens through substantial development projects that boost infrastructure development and drive efficiency across public services. The Government's ongoing efforts are underpinned by Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030, which is built upon the principles of sustainability, fairness and competitiveness to achieve even greater prosperity for the people of Bahrain. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organisation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, inaugurated two investment towers for the RCO named Abraj Al Khair in the presence of a number of excellencies, ministers and senior officials. His Highness hailed the continuous support and initiatives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa towards charity and humanitarian work, praising His Majesty's directives to provide all kinds of support for Bahraini orphans and widows and his keenness to ensure the facilitation of these services through enhancing the financial status of the RCO in order to provide high living standards for the people. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and for his support to establish Al Khair praising the support and efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. He added that the Kingdom is always keen on providing humanitarian support and the inauguration of Abraj Al Khair will result in providing services the people of Bahrain need, with proceeds of the towers being allocated to charity and humanitarian work carried out by the Royal Charity Organisation. Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Muller, chaired the weekly meeting today where the Council discussed a letter from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, regarding a number of draft laws. They were approved by the Council and referred to the concerned committees. The draft laws included military judiciary law, the Representatives' Code of Conduct, the selling of dredged sand, establishment and organisation of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority and the Office of Financial and Administrative Control Law. Two reports regarding financial disclosure and cooperative organisation were approved, as well as two draft laws regarding the regulation of tourism and the rehabilitation and employment of people with special needs. The meeting then approved a number of proposals regarding civil service bureau law, establishing petrol stations and services and reducing graduate fees for students of the University of Bahrain. Finally, the meeting approved a proposal that traffic management establish a comprehensive and urgent awareness campaign on traffic violations and penalties. The University of Bahrain had signed a partnership agreement with the United Kingdom's Higher Education Academy, that's the HEA. This agreement would pave the way for the UOB to develop its programmes, which are accredited by the Higher Education Academy, to other local and regional universities.
The University of Bahrain signed the agreement with the chief executive at the HEA, Dr. Stephanie Marshall, in the presence of the United Kingdom's ambassador to the kingdom, Simon Martin. The UOB's president, Riyad Yusuf Hamza, affirmed the university's capability to lead the teaching methods development process in Bahrain and the region, noting that this international partnership is the first of its kind regionally and fourth in the international level. This took place at the inauguration event of the first University Education Development Forum. Dozens of professors at the University of Bahrain received fellowship and advanced fellowships certification from the British Academy after completing the graduate programme in academic practice offered by the York Street John University. Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry held a press conference in Beit al Teja today in relation to the Bahraini Egyptian Expo taking place between the 16th and the 18th of next month in Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Centre. More on the expo now in this report from Heba al Ghagafar. <laughs> While hailing the bilateral ties between Bahrain and Egypt and the close relationship between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on all areas, a press conference was organized by Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry about a Bahraini Egyptian exhibition to be held next month for the first time in Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. The press conference stressed on the prospect of business and the need to stimulate trade and investment and encourage engagement between members of the Bahraini and Egyptian business communities. A concrete ex uh, expression of, our, of the desire of the two business peoples to come together and to create some kind of partnership and to understand better both societies. So I believe this is something very important for us. It's an introduction of Egypt in the new form and shape. The exhibition will include exhibitors from both friendly countries and will center on a number of sectors including the industrial, tourism, real estate and banking as the chamber is offering the pavilion's rent at competitive prices and an exemption from the expo entrance charges. The proper channel uh, to, for both parties, for the counterparts to meet and to exchange uh, information and also to complement each other. The exhibition will be grounds uh, for uh, other GCC countries also to know about the Egyptian uh, sectors, the different sectors in Egypt. And uh, through the Chamber of Commerce and our counterpart, the Association for Egyptian Industries in Egypt, we will be uh, acting on uh, facilitating all the obstacles that. Uh, could uh, come across if people want to do business between the two countries. Since art speaks all languages, it can't be ignored in such a platform for cultural exchange. The exhibition will designate a pavilion for crafts and another for painters. Nevertheless, coinciding the exhibition, a musical concert organized by the Egyptian Opera House will be held at the Cultural Hall, where Bahraini artists will take part alongside their Egyptian counterparts. Bahrain and Egypt reaffirmed their historical business relations and friendly ties through a Bahraini Egyptian exhibition held for the first time next month, bringing communities together and encouraging business owners to exploit business and investment opportunities. Reporting for Bahrain International and Harab the Report. Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah and let's start to, with the local stocks. As Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,348.54 points, marking an increase of 0.72 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks, investment and industrial sectors. And investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 44% of total shares. 89 transactions included 2,911,106 shares worth 755,170 Bahraini dinars.